One Scripture Doctrine The devil can cite scripture for his purpose, said William Shakespeare in The Merchant of Venice. There are many out there who simply use one scripture to teach on baptism. Two noted examples. The Trinitarians use Matthew 28, 19 out of context for their baptismal formula. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And the Church of the Latter-day Saints or Mormons use 1 Corinthians 15.29 to baptize for the dead, or what is called baptism by proxy. What else shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? However, we find that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. This was necessary under the law in the Old Testament. We read in Deuteronomy 17.6, At the mouth of two or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. And in the New Testament, Paul repeated this same principle. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Every single apostle used Jesus' name baptism as their sole name in their formula. Examples are the following scriptures. Mark 16, 15 through 17, Luke 24, 45 through 47, John 20, 23, Acts 2, 38, Acts 8, 12 through 16, Acts 10, 48, Acts 18 and 8, Acts 19 and 5, Acts 22, 16, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Romans 6, 3 through 5, Galatians 3 and 27. So nobody ever used a misapplied title baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's because they knew the name of the Father was Jesus, and the Son was named Jesus, and the Holy Spirit was sent in Jesus' name. Peter said unto those people in the book of Acts that they should save themselves from this ungodly generation. That's in Acts 2.40. Though these three men Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, said the Lord God. Ezekiel 14.14. 14, 14. And also, Ezekiel writes, The soul that sins, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. But the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Ezekiel 18.20. So we find that nobody can save anybody but themselves in the Old Testament and in the New. In the Word of God, we find only one individual entity using a one-verse teaching to establish something. The first Adam and his wife Eve were told by the devil that God's command of not eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, lest they die, was misunderstood by them. Genesis 3, 1-5. He plainly said that they would not die, but instead have their eyes open to secret knowledge to know both good and evil. But what happened in the end was they brought sin into the world by their disobedience. In Matthew 4, we see the devil taking scripture out of context to trick Jesus into sin and tempt him. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time thou shalt dash your foot against the stone. Matthew 4 and 6. Yet Jesus replied, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Matthew 4 and 7. The second Adam, even our Lord Jesus Christ, knew that if any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. He saw through that blatant twisting of Scripture. Jesus spoke of religious people who didn't understand the word of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Matthew 12, 29. Peter warned us of this type of doctrine or teaching, as in all his ep epistles, speaking in them of the, these things, in which some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Second Peter 
chapter 3, 16 through 17. Paul said this concerning traditions of men that wrongfully expounded upon the word of God. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. In Colossians 2 and 8. There are many people out there who are preaching and teaching singular scripture teachings which are against the word of God. Should you place your trust in them or within the word of God? We should be like Jesus who said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4 and 4. Finally, Jesus warned us, If any man add unto his words, God would then add unto him a plague. He also said, If any man would take away from his words, then he would take away their part out of the book of life. That's in Revelations 22, 18 through 19. Are you willing to follow the word of Jesus and the faith of the apostles? Or be like those on the day of the Lord who claim Jesus was theirs, yet they are cast away because they were still in sin? In Matthew 7, 21 through 23. God bless you as you obey his word.